Hey, Jessica. Hey, how are you? I'm doing good. Wonderful. I heard something crazy the other day. What did you hear? That dachshunds could be the new pregnancy <laughs> test. Is that true? Docs, I, I read about that story as well. It's well, really, you're going to share that with us? It's incredibly interesting. All right, well, before you do that, yeah. we've got some questions <laughs> okay. that have been okay. sent in. Guys, if you want to have Jessica answer your questions, all you got to do is put the question in the comment of one of these videos, and she will actually answer it for you. Kim this first question, <laughs> wait, Kim is, Kim, Kim is, what's Kim doing? She, she, she doesn't want to get well, in it. She okay, well, that's fine. Kim, you want to be on video? Be on that's video? fine. You know, she's not going to want to stick throughout this whole video. She's not. Okay, she, so oh, anyhow, my good girl. this question comes from Francis Matthews. Francis Matthews. Okay, Francis. And it says, there are so many flea and tick medications on the market. There are, yeah. Yeah, yeah, there sure are. I'd really prefer a natural flea and tick medication for my dog and cat. Mm -hmm. What do you recommend? Wow, yeah, I, there are so many flea and tick medications on the market, and a lot of them, I think, I, I don't want to get it wrong, I know it's Brevecto, Trifexis, there are a lot of them that have actually had to include warnings uh, just this year, just in 2020, they've had to start including warnings on their packaging because they are causing neurological damage uh, to a lot of dogs. It's like one out of three. It, I'll put a link in the description below so you guys can read about it yourselves. This is not something coming from me. This is something coming from people who have been studying this and a, a lot of user testimonials. Um, so the, there's, there's a lot of neurological damage being seen in animals using just regular medications that you get from your veterinarian that you think you would be able to trust like Trifexis Brevecto Revolution. And I can't, I, I used to use Revolution on my cats many, many years ago, and I had stopped using it, and then because of an ear condition that one of my cats had, my veterinarian said, we really need to use um, Revolution in combination with this other ear medication just to get everything cleared up. I was very reluctant to do it, but I, I went ahead and did it because my veterinarian at the time, of course this was many years ago, at the time, said we really had, I mean, even with my pushback, said we really needed to do it. So we did it and my cat got a chemical burn from it. So I am one of those user testimonials that we, we need better flea and tick preventatives for our animals. What we have on the market today is just not cutting it. It's not good enough and we shouldn't accept it. So um, to, to really answer your question about what I do recommend you know, this is a really personal, uh, really something that you need to research on your own to see, because just listening to me and, and, and of course, I, like I said, I'll put a link in the description below about the neurological issues that are happening with a lot of dogs and cats on these flea and tick medications, but it's going to vary so much depending on your your dog or your cat's particular situation. So if you live in an area like we live in, there aren't a ton of mosquitoes here, there aren't a ton of fleas here. I'm in San Diego, California. But if you're in some place like Australia, I, I mean, I've heard it can it can be really, really bad there with ticks, sometimes even fleas. So it really depends on the climate that you live in as to what kind of protection you and your pet actually need, how much time your pet actually spends outdoors. Um, for my cats and for most cats and really should be for um, all cats, they are 100% indoors. Um, so, you know, their exposure to fleas and ticks is so minimal that for me, I choose not to provide flea and tick medication. They're, the risks of giving it to them versus their potential exposure is, I mean, it's night and day. Like the scale is, is tipped way in, 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 in an imbalance of we don't even need it. But uh, when you do need it, what I prefer, and I have used this even on my dog, when it, like if we, we traveled at one point, we just went up in the mountains and I didn't know what the climate was gonna be like there. I didn't know, um, you know if fleas and ticks were gonna be an issue. So what I did was I took, um, a water mixture with essential oils and the only essential oils I use 
for my dog and for my cats and for me are Animalio essential oils. Uh, I am, this is in no way sponsored by Animalio. I am not affiliated with them. I just happen to love the product. So I will also link that in the description below. They have a flea bomb treatment. They have uh, a couple of different mixtures of essential oils for um, repelling insects in general that would include fleas and ticks so if one doesn't work for you you can try another because regionally things are different you know just depending on the the insects and the climate and how much exposure your animal has so there's a lot to consider so i, I really couldn't provide a blanket statement as to only use x but what i would prefer and the most natural thing to do is use animal safe veterinary grade essential oils which would be animalio so i will link that in the description below okay jessica that was terribly interesting that was really was i really enjoyed that i appreciate you sharing that with us hey we've got another question here and it's from monkey 12 yt so okay. i'll put the question here up on the screen and it says i recently got a dog okay. he's a border collie mixed with a healer and i realized he's deaf, deaf and i'm having a hard time training him to pee outside okay. and also where do you recommend I take him to get the bear test done? Thank you for your time. Oh, oh, a healer. How cute. Okay, so I actually, my very first dog that I ever adopted ended up being deaf. So I do have some tips for you. The first thing I would say is if you have another dog, um, oftentimes when you have a dog that is bl blind or deaf or otherwise impaired, that other dog can be the best trainer, but that's not always the situation. That's not always the case for most people. Uh, what I would say is if your dog is deaf, like you've just said, what would you do if you couldn't talk? Because that's what we need to figure out, right? We need to get the same things across to our dogs but we can't say it. So we need to use our other senses. We need to use more hand gestures. We need to use more rewards, whether that is play, whether that's a special toy that they have, food, treats, we need to use more rewards. So we need to really, specifically with potty training, really, really pay attention to your dog's tells. Every dog has a tell on when they need, to, when they're getting ready to go potty. So when you see your dog start to do that, immediately just rush, go grab him, take him outside. When he potties outside, really throw a big party. And you don't have to yell and scream and be happy because he's not gonna be, you know, you don't have to be like, yay, 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 good job, because he's not gonna hear you. You can do that if you want, but use hand gestures and be happy and make sure your body language is showing your dog that you're really happy and excited about what they've done and reward, reward, reward that positive behavior, that good behavior that you wanna see in your dog. Um, one, one other thing that you can do, and I recommend this with any potty, any potty training regimen that I'm putting in place with any dog, is to, if they go potty in the house, first of all, never, ever, ever reprimand them because it's not their fault. It's our fault that we weren't paying enough attention and, and directing them in the right ways. So it's just clean it up and go on about your you know, regular walk and tell yourself you're going to do better next time. But anytime you're cleaning that up, take it outside and put, especially if it's, um, especially if your dog has maybe defecated, take it outside and put it in a spot that you want them to go. That way they can start associating that smell with, okay, I'm supposed to do this here. And again, when they do go potty outside, make sure you reward that big time and throw a big party for your dog. Um, as far as that bear test, I would definitely, rec I'm not sure where you're from, so I would definitely recommend talking to your veterinarian about the best place to get that done. However, I'm not even sure, and for anybody that's wondering, that's basically just a test to tell how much hearing, if, if there's any hearing at all, that your dog has left. Um, just a, a scale of, are they completely deaf? Do they have some hearing, maybe in their the right ear or their left ear? But for me, I mean, if you really wanna have it done, you can. I don't always think it's necessary, so definitely check with your veterinarian to find out the best place to have that done. Awesome, I appreciate <laughs> you sharing that with everybody. That is really cool. Yeah. All right, Jessica, well, I, I'm still waiting to hear that story yeah. about if dogs can tell you if you're <laughs> pregnant or not. That's wild, but it anyhow, is. we got one more question before we get to that. Okay. And it's from 
Cat Crazy 75. Okay. Uh, Cat Crazy 75 says, I hand feed my 18 year old wow. Himalayan cat, but her neck gets food on it. I want something that won't hurt her and safe as she sometimes cleans herself, especially after her feeding. What about coconut oil, but no vinegar? Thank you, waiting your response. <laughs> So first of all, wow, an 18-year-old cat is definitely not the oldest cat on record, but that's really saying that, you know, you're really doing a great job taking care of your pets. And as a pet parent coach, I, I certainly appreciate that. Um, the fact that you are hand feeding your cat, I'm not sure if there are any like medical issues going on. So that would be the, the first question that I would really have back to you um, as to, you know, cleaning, cleaning your cat up. If cats are incredibly clean animals, they clean themselves almost as much as they sleep in a day. So if your cat isn't cleaning himself on his own, that is definitely something I would bring up with your veterinarian. But um, coconut oil is perfectly fine, perfectly safe for your cat or your dog, any pet. Um, it's, it's, it's perfectly safe to use. Uh, but as far as just a natural way of cleaning up your pet in general is just, you know, warm water and a damp cloth is going to be <laughs> your best bet. But yeah, coconut oil is completely fine. So if your cat is not cleaning themselves as much as they used to or as much as you think they should be because like I said cats are incredibly clean animals and do spend as much time grooming in a day almost as much time as they do sleeping um, so if your cat is no longer doing that that could be an indication of underlying medical issues that your cat isn't feeling well so I definitely would bring that up with your veterinarian okay we're, we're to the point I can't stand it anymore <laughs> I'm just jumping up down over here I want to know if dogs can tell if you're pregnant do you have some cases of this? I mean, what's going on? I know it was such a cute story that I read. A miniature dachshund named Rusty. He was uh, still a pup, only around eight months old, and at uh, for six whole months they had this dog, and he was so in love with the husband, the man in the family, and spent all of his time loving and cuddling. The They would get on the sofa at night, he would, Rusty would just cuddle right up to him. And the woman was kind of, you know, like, okay, I wish he would love me a little bit more. And all of a sudden, six months later, out of the blue, Rusty just fell in love with her and wouldn't leave her alone, was always just right by her side, snuggling up next to her, and she couldn't figure out what had changed. Lo and behold, within a couple of weeks, she found out she was pregnant and Rusty stuck beside her the entire pregnancy. So I think that's pretty, pretty cool that Rusty knew before anybody else that she was pregnant. <laughs> Jessica, I really appreciate, and I'm sure the audience really appreciates you answering these questions. This is really cool that you do this every week and that you will answer anybody's questions no matter how uncomfortable <laughs> they are. And some of them, oh my gosh, they've been uncomfortable. Some hey guys, if you want Jessica to answer your questions and see your name on screen, see your comment on screen, you need to comment below, ask a question about anything you want. Now Jessica, <laughs> if people want to get more information, more training, uh, more help from you, how could they go about that? What's some ways they can get in touch Absolutely. With you? Check the description below. There are so many great links for you. First of all, there's a link to the Beginner Dog Training Series, which is a series right here on YouTube, and you, it'll walk you through week by week of everything you need to do to start training your dog. Uh, whether you have a new puppy or a, maybe a new adult rescue, or if you've had a dog for a while and you just never did any training with them that is okay it is never too late to, to start so definitely check that out there is also a link in the description to my book i definitely recommend you check that out it is the very first thing i teach any of my in-home clients so definitely grab your copy the link is in the description it's a digital download just click and you'll have it right then and there to start reading and yes i also have online training courses video training courses the link to that is also in the description below uh one last thing i do have a group so definitely join the family join the group the link is in the, the description there are thousands of other pet parents and myself waiting for you to join to share all about you and your dog and your pets and i just can't wait for you to join so go ahead and click the link in the description for that as well all right guys thank you so much for being here with me in this video i really enjoy doing these videos but 
to keep doing them, you have to provide the questions. Go ahead and post those in the comments below. Also, if you are, if you're new to my channel or if you just haven't subscribed yet, look down there at that red subscribe button is down there. Go ahead and click it and turn it gray. When you do a bell will appear, click the bell, select all notifications. That way YouTube can notify you every time I post a new video. Give this video a big thumbs up. Also, there's gonna be another video popping up right about here. It's definitely gonna help build that bond between you and your pet. So go ahead and check that one out next. Thank you so much for being here and I'll see you in our next video.